Welcome to a lecture on bone and joints. So diseases of those, what comes to mind? Osteoporosis, of course, bone fractures, an acute injury, and uh, joints, you think arthritis. So we will cover all of these things. All right. So first, we'll just review some things. So get it fresh in your mind so that the pathologies make sense. Um, when you hear a human body contains 206 bones, that is an average. Uh, people out there, you have 204 or 212. Uh, thing. You can have an extra uh, lumbar vertebrae, extra cervical vertebrae, the sutural bones in your skull. Uh, carpals and tarsals are often split or fused. So, you know, I've seen uh, 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 13 ribs on one side. So yeah, this is, you know, this is obviously an average, but um, split into, of course, the axial skeleton and uh, I'm clicking all of this, and then the appendicular skeleton, like an appendix comes off of it. All right. So bone, actually the first, when you think of bone, you think of it as a scaffolding for your muscles in order to have movement, but probably the, in the evolution of bone, it probably came about for um, storage of minerals, calcium and phosphorus, and for protection. So the first bone you see in these jawless fishes have these shields over their head. And for us, if we need that really important calcium, um, we can break down our bone and release it, and we can store it in our bone. So definitely it's uh, important for uh, mineral metabolism and homeostasis, right? But of course, it uh, makes the joints to allow our, our movement, and it's good protection too. Think about our skull, solid protection for your brain, your rib cage, less protection, but still pretty good to protect your, your lungs and heart. It allows you to breathe by moving, yeah. And living bone, just, it's so easy to think of bone, when you think of the dry skeleton hanging in the anatomy lab. And in life, bones are, are wet and heavy and filled with blood, blood vessels coming in and out, and they, they grow, they react really well. If you put pressure on them, they grow. If you, if you put it in a cast, they get smaller and the, the inside is making all of your, your blood cells. So it's really a living dynamic wet tissue. But we kind of think of it as just being kind of the skeleton, you know, the dry skeleton, the bones you study in lab. And then looking at joints, there's a whole kinds of joints and we're not gonna review them all, but uh, yeah, remember some have very little movement like this feature in your skull or in your, your, your pelvis uh, to, to, your, to your sacrum, um, things that are, have very little movements. Uh, uh, anyway, your, your vertebrae kind of in between, they, they can flex and rotate just a little bit uh, depending on the location. And then the big joints that move around a lot are synovial joints. And so these, of course, you have uh, two bones coming together and bone on bone would not be good. So you've got a, a layer of hyaline cartilage nice and slippery. You can see it here, white and slippery, and well, shock absorption. And then you'll have a capsule around it. And lining it, not on the cartilage, but lining the rest of it here, is a synovial membrane that secretes a little bit of fluid, synovial fluid. Actually, ova comes from egg, so it has a consistency of egg white. Uh, and it's gooey in there. And some of you have had you can produce too much of it, it has to be drained, things like that. But that lubricating fluid is produced in there. Your synovial joints also should be uh, um, sterile. So you can see if it gets infected, that can, can effectively be a problem. Yeah, and then normally when you look at a synovial joint, you need strengthening. So you have uh, ligaments, this tough joint capsule around it. Think about your knee with your hamstrings and quadriceps, patella in front. So to give stability to that, right? When we look at your finger joint, you know, it can go this way, but it can't go this way, you know, this uh, interphalangeal joint can't bend sideways because there's really tough ligaments there and it's, it's loose uh, anterior and posteriorly so it can move. Yeah, you guys got it. But the synovial joint we'll be talking about here with, with arthritis. A basic bone anatomy, we look at the diaphysis is the shaft of the bone. Metiphys metiphysis is at the, at the kind of the, where it widens out near the, near the epiphysis and the epiphysis are the ends of the bones. See how wide they are in this humerus. So it'd be proximal and distal epiphysis. Epiphyseal line, you can see a line here. And uh, as you're growing up, it's a cartilage band. And I'll show you great pictures of that. But then it fuses when you're done growing. And that's it. Periosteum, so the bone is surrounded by this saran wrap-like membrane 
lots of nerves, lots of nerves. So when you get a bone break, the, 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 the pain really comes from that, breaking that periosteum. Compact bone is solid, just super strong, as opposed to spongy bone, which has its strength, but it's lighter, you know, uh, and uh, for um, it's less dense. And uh, yeah, and then when we talk about osteoporosis, you'll see it affects spongy bone more than compact bone because there's more surface area for those osteoclasts to break it down, more surface area. And histologically, you know, both these kinds of bone they look alike, although in the compact bone you can have those nice perversion systems or osteons. Articular cartilage is where bones articulate or come together. It's made out of hyaline cartilage. It's slippery, uh, nice. And then middle is the medulla, the cavity in there with the bone marrow. And the bone marrow up here is gonna be red marrow. It's gonna be hemopoietic tissue making blood cells. And the marrow in here in the, in the diaphysis is gonna be yellow marrow. It's gonna be stored to fat. Also delicious roasted on some rye bread. And then uh, again, these bones are living things and they've got nutrient arteries and these little nutrient foramina holes to bring blood in and out. All right, here's just some x-rays. And if you were a rookie and uh, you saw these like, oh my God, they've got a bone break here. The bone separated here, but oh my God, the bones have all these break. No, these, this is normal. This is normal uh, um, uh, until you reach puberty. So this is the epiphyseal plate. This is the cartilage that as it grows, it allows the, these bones to lengthen. And so it is a zone of weakness. Uh, if you have a break there as a, as a kid, you, they gotta be really careful with it because then you can have abnormal growth at that growth plate and you could have one leg longer than the other, things like that. So it's a place where the cartilage is still growing till hormones say you're done, it fuses into bone. Oh, you know, we don't need to go through this. Beautiful slide, I love the ground bone sections, right? These are osteocytes, my little caniculi connecting them. This is the uh, central canal, the blood vessel in the middle. You got it. And this, uh, the tissue in this connective tissue is a calcium phosphate uh, crystal hydroxyapatite, right? Another beautiful view. So just so your mind is back there to bone, right? And you studied this very well, how, how it's going on. You can see the periosteum on the outside there. And these osteocytes are trapped in these little lacunae, yeah? and they connect to each other. The only way ones out here get nutrients is if their buddies keep sharing it. All right, and then bone forms in two ways. Um, most of your bones are endochondral, which means you make a cartilage model, and then uh, the cartilage grows. So babies are really bendy and flexible, and then it, uh, it ossifies and turns into bone. And uh, it'll begin in the center, there'll be a collar of bone, uh, like that. Then secondary centers will happen in the epiphysis like this, and they will grow. And so you have really, at the two ends, you have bone coming out and the milia bone coming out, and it leaves that epiphyseal plate of cartilage there. It leaves that plate, and it's beautiful, this, look at this histological slide, that cartilage, and you, you need growth hormone going on until eventually the bone catches up and ossifies the whole cartilage. But all through your teens and et cetera, the cartilage is growing fast enough and it's not being converted to bone and allows you to grow, all right? And then the other uh, form of bone formation is intramembranous, which pretty much you have two membranes and it forms between them. And these are flat bones of your skull, uh, your clavicle is like this, so it's, it's a few bones like that, but uh, um, it's a different way of bone formation where the bone kind of forms between these membranes. All right, uh, the joints, you guys remember studying this in AMP, but, uh, uh, the knee joint, I mean, that's, that's, that's a thing of beauty, right? Or those of you with injuries, they go, oh, that's a pain in the butt, right? But um, yeah, I don't think I need to, I don't need to review all of this because it's, yeah, you don't need to know, but your cruciate ligaments, your ACL and PCL, right? And you have uh, these meniscus are made out of fibrocartilage and uh, nice shock absorber there. And it gets a little stability because the knee, it's amazing they work. I mean, it's just this big femur, all your weight on this big flat head of the, of the tibia there. Yeah, cool. And then your collateral ligaments, median lateral on the outside. And spinal column, uh, a lot of issues happen here as, as you age, right? You get shorter as you get older because those vertebral discs actually collapse. Like, you get kyphosis and it's kind of hunchback kind of thing, right? But of course, this is made of, uh, yeah, you know, the cervical, thoracic, lumbar uh, vertebrae. 
breakfast, lunch, dinner, 7, 12, 5. And then again, these can vary too. You can have six lumbar, but this is, this is the, the most common. So that's what we have in our, in our textbooks. And the intervertebral discs make up about a quarter of the height of that. And uh, they're made out of a really tough fibrocartilage on the outside with a gooey center, kind of a gel center. And uh, this is really good. It allows it to, uh, to compress able to do some rotation, things like that. It, it does bend, but it's pretty freaking tough. It takes all your weight, you know, as you come up from the layup and you come down, all that weight, you know, it's going to be on those discs. And as we get older, these discs dehydrate. And so they, they fail. I've had that where uh, the gooey center squirts out and then it collapses and it squirts out into the vertebral, into the spinal column, which is never a good place. All right, flat bones, talking about sternum, some skull bones, your ribs. Um, and he, he, hemopoiesis, where you make blood, uh, as you're a kid, all the bones are chipping in. But as you get older, you don't need your whole skeleton to do it. So as you can see, it's really these flat bones are important to making blood, your skull bones, your sternum, your hip bones, and the proximal parts of your long bones. But you can see all this, you're not making, it's not hemopoietic tissue. It's just going to be the marrow be filled with fat. All right, so bone really like I say, is an active tissue that's going to react to your metabolism, your, your, your um, um, uh, electrolyte needs, you know, how much calcium and phosphorus that you need. Uh, um, um, uh, diseases can affect it. Uh, it's, it's, it's in this balance, too. You're going to see a bone building and bone breaking down. And if you remember, osteoblasts build bone, osteoclasts break down bone. So they're listening to hormones and uh, this balance of building and, and uh, breaking down is, works pretty well. And then in old age, you're gonna see the scale tips a little bit towards the clasts and you end up slowly getting lower bone density, uh, the osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. Uh, hormones are important. I would include thyroid hormone and growth hormone as well, but the two big ones here for calcium um, uh, metabolism, parathyroid hormone is going to break down your bone. It's going to increase uh, calcium levels in your blood, and calcitonin is going to do the opposite, right? Parathyroid hormone comes from the parathyroid glands, right? Calcitonin comes from those little extra follicular C cells in the thyroid, and so they're just responding to blood calcium levels, and they'll release their, their hormone accordingly and that'll affect bone and your kidneys, vitamin D. Sex hormones too, we'll see, uh, you know, with, with puberty, uh, when you, you have these growth spurts, things like that you're familiar with, and estrogen too is, has a big effect too. So you're gonna see uh, postmenopausal women when they have that drop in estrogen, they really have a drop in, uh, in bone density and why women um, have more osteoporosis than men too, hormonally related for sure, yep. And of course, vitamin D. Talked about this with the kidneys and the skin, but um, this is going to involve calcium absorption in your gut. Beautiful. Um, so uh, your bone, it's, I'll show you, it's amazing how it remodels. I mean, uh, depending on stresses, if you start working out, lifting weights, your bone gets more dense. You sit on the couch, you're sick, your bone, within 24 hours, yeah, you have this, this loss of bone if you don't move. Um, so it's just reacting to stresses and, and how it does it interesting kind of thing. You press a crystal, there's this piezoelectric effect. It gives off electricity. So possibly that encourages bone growth, um, you know, but how does it know that you're stressing a particular bone to, to grow? It's, uh, it's really interesting. But yeah, but weight-bearing exercise, of course, if you want to do that early on to build up your bone. So you're in a cast, it goes to nothing. When you're in space, they really worry about your bones all being reabsorbed because there's no uh, weight-bearing. And this is awesome. This is so if you look at a professional tennis player or a, like a pitcher, you look at the look at the two humeri here. See the difference uh, in, the, in the pitching arm versus the, the non-pitching arm. So uh, the beautiful thing you can see uh, how dynamic. And if you switched arms, this would switch over. So your body uh, beautifully reacts and gets thicker. The bones get thicker. It gets more protuberances and, and bigger crests when you're, the muscles are pulling harder on the bone. All right, let's get to the most frequent and serious problems. I'm back, don't worry. So arthritis, of course. Arthritis, y'all heard arthritis. We'll talk about a couple different types, but there's actually many kinds of arthritis. 
the big categories of osteo and rheumatoid arthritis, but all kinds of things. And of course, arthritis means, arthro means joints, arthroscopic surgery, arthropods are insects and crustaceans. But um, so arthritis is gonna be this inflammation of, of, um, of the joints. And uh, as you get older, you get this, this degenerative or osteoarthritis, that just the cartilage wears off and it's, there's pain and the bones are rubbing. Then rheumatoid is different. It's where actually there's a thought to be autoimmune where you attack the, um, the, the joint capsule. You end up with both, both of them have joint pain and um, um, degeneration of the joint, but they're, they're different diseases. Fractures, we'll talk about bone breaks. Um, very common. Um, how many of you have broken a bone? Um, and normal breaks that are obvious, you fall off your horse, you know, you know where that came from, but you see pathological breaks or spontaneous breaks happen with like a simple fall or like, you just broke a bone? Then you look at, is it bone cancer? Is there something weakening the bones because that normally shouldn't have caused a bone fracture? So pathologic breaks, yeah. We look at bone cancer, we look at osteoporosis, yeah. And your fractures depend on, uh, you know, if you're a kid, it's usually a, a clavicle or arm from falling or being pulled. And if you're an old uh, woman, it's usually gonna be a hip or vertebrae. Uh, yeah, uh, wrist is a common place to break. Um, so uh, osteoporosis is a form of osteopenia. Remember, like thrombocytopenia is not enough thrombocytes. Osteopenia means it's not enough bone. And so if you look at these two uh, illustrations here, you can see one is, has, has definitely lost bone density, right? That's osteopenia. I see where it gets to a certain point. We call it osteoporosis. It means porous bone. Okay? And then uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, rickets, and we'll see this osteomalacia, or when uh, the bone doesn't ossify enough. Maybe we don't have enough vitamin D, not enough calcium and phosphorus in there. Talk about that. If your parathyroid gland is, has a tumor on it, you have hyperparathyroidism, too much thyroid hormone, too much breaking down of bone. And then of course, uh, uh, bone cancer can eat away at your bone. And we look at bone cancer, there is osteosarcoma uh, that actually originates in bone, but normally if you have bone cancer, it's metastasized from somewhere else, colon cancer, uh, some other cancer has, has, has found its way to the bone because all this blood comes in there, right? It's very spongy. It's so like the liver, it's a good place for a, metastases to come and start growing. Yes, bone cancer can be very, very painful, uh, definitely. And uh, yeah, this multiple myeloma, remember that plasma cells, uh, common in adults. All right, so signs and symptoms. Usually a person comes in holding their arm. Oh, we have a bone problem, right? Uh, bone break. Um, so pain, decreased mo motility, they don't wanna move it. And uh, you can maybe see the, the deformity, the break, like, oh, you automatically know it's a bone break if your hand is like bent like this the wrong way, right? Definitely. Um, and arthritis, again, pain, inflammation, and uh, stiffness, lack of mobility. You know, as you can imagine, a person with arthritis. All right, so um, you want to take a look at them, and you can um, uh, possibly look at, have them walk, look at their gait. Uh, uh, have them move the joint and see at what point is this pain come about. This is a drawer test looking for looking at uh, your cruciate ligaments. It sh should move a little bit, but not too much. This means you, you, you broke ACL or PCL. Um, it could be a neurological problem. We'll talk about uh, uh, that. Um, and then uh, you can, of course, feel to see if there is, uh, if the bone has a tumor on it or there's some kind of a irregularity that you can, you can palpate. If there's not too much pain, you can go ahead and feel the joint or the, the bone. Diagnostically, the number one tool is gonna to be radiography, taking an X-ray, right? Ankle hurts, swollen, well, let's get an X-ray because that allows you to see what's going on uh, with the bone. So that's the big one. And then uh, you can use a CT or an MRI, especially used uh, looking at the vertebrae to look at the soft tissue, the discs. Uh, for MRI, especially, and looking at joints. I want to look at the soft tissue of the joints. X-ray will give you the bones, but MRI will give you more uh, soft tissue. Yeah? And arthroscopy is putting a scope in your joints, arthroscopy. And uh, yeah, they can go in there with tools and little scissors and lasers, and they can uh, remove pieces of cartilage and, uh, and do things like that. And it just leaves you with a few scars, has an easy rehab. And then they may do, uh, looking at the blood, they can uh, 
you can look at calcium phosphorus. This al uh, alkaline phosphatase is used uh, uh, often in any blood chemistry, and it tells you things about your liver, things like that. But it's also important uh, if your osteoblasts are working overtime. It'll be so it's a marker that can mean many things, but uh, it's a good um, you want to know that when you're when you're trying to diagnose someone. And then looking at uh, markers of inflammation, and then uh, uh, rheumatic. There's a antibody you can look at to see if it's see if you have um, rheumatoid arthritis, and then uh, blood uric acid levels. Gout is when you have too much uric acid in your blood. That's what's going into your joints. Yep. And uh, we'll see that um, um, there's a, your joints can get infected with bacteria, and osteomyelitis is infection of your bones. And so you might want to do a culture to see what kind of creature is growing so you can tailor the antibiotics. Yep. Biopsy, not too, not too often, the bone biopsy to, uh, um, well, I shouldn't say that so often, but um, if they can determine uh, you know, you've got um, um, uh, what bacteria you have, one of the common ones, they just give you the antibiotics, but they can go in there and, and get a sample out of your bone too. It's just got to get a drill and everything. All right, so let's get to some of these uh, so issues. So first, uh, genetic developmental. Um, clubfoot, uh, one in a thousand births, so it's not that uncommon. I've known someone uh, that's born with clubfoot. And uh, it's just, uh, Again, we're not exactly sure what's the cause. It's mostly in, in little boys, but the, the foot is, 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 is brought in and, and up, and uh, those ligaments are really stretched. Um, sometimes it is a breech birth. Uh, I'm sure it says that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe not. Oh, that's maybe hip dysplasia, dysplasia here. Okay, but so it's being males. It's usually both feet. And you come out with a club foot, it can be disturbing, but they can fix it. They put it in casts or do some surgery. And then with the healing, it's, it heals in the normal position, but comes out with a club foot. Here it is. Here we're talking about breach. Yeah. So this uh, congenital hip dislocation. Yeah. It comes out, and uh, if it's not treated, uh, you will have a hip deformity. So when they notice this, they'll, they'll um, uh, uh, they'll, they'll move it and they'll be able to feel that it's, it's not quite dislocates, right? So yeah, firstborn kids more often, women more often, and then being in the breech position, maybe it's uh, the leg had been forced that, that direction. But yeah, they will, um, uh, they'll do some movements. They'll abduct and abduct the leg and then they'll feel this chunk in there moving and that's, the, that's that dislocation. So, okay, they've got this, uh, this dysplasia, the hip dysplasia. And um, you need to get it in the right position and like put it, keep it in that position and then the bone will grow correctly. Torticollis. This is a, a condition where the neck is, is turned to the side. It has to do with the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Is, uh, needs to be, sometimes it has to be cut or it needs to be stretched and relaxed to bring it back. But this turned neck um, uh, is seen often in infancy See, with adults have an issue, can have an issue like that too. But um, yeah, this rye neck, they can, uh, they'll recognize it and they'll correct it. Achondroplasia. All right, so this is something where uh, the epiphyseal plate just, uh, there's a real issue with it. And um, you end up not having proper uh, growth at those growth plates. Um, and because the flat bones of the head don't have that, it'd be a normal head, normal mental development. But when you look at the limbs, they'll be disproportionately short because uh, you have this, this issue with the cartilage at the epiphyseal plate. Oh, osteogenesis and perfecta. I've known uh, two women with kids that have had this. That means uh, making bone imperfectly, right? And so uh, it's, it's, a, it's a problem with collagen. And bones are both, have to have, both collagen for flexibility and that um, hydroxyapatite uh, crystal for, for, for strength. And if you go one way or the other, your bones are either too bendy or they're too brittle. And this is too brittle. The collagen, you need that in normal bone because it needs to have some flexing, a little bit of flexing, right? If not, it's too brittle and it breaks real easily. So there's many different genes. You can have various forms of osteogenesis imperfecta. And often what happens is that you have 
break broken bones. And so these children can't be allowed to play rough house, anything like that. I'm mean, allowed to play, but I mean, not like you know, sports or anything like that because they've just, their bones are, are, are too brittle. Uh, the movie uh, Unbreakable. Of, uh, Bruce Willis. Yeah, Bruce Willis is in it. And uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, they had this disease. And so, uh, um, in fact, uh, you, you put in, uh, they have uh, strength, uh, strengtheners, uh, bars that can go. And as you're a kid, they can actually twist it and, and change it to move it as you grow. And another thing you can look at is uh, the collagen in the, the sclera of the eye has kind of a bluish hue in people with osteogenesis imperfecta. So there's other issues. Um, um, but um, main thing is if collagen not working right, your bone is too brittle. Right. Marfan syndrome, interesting. So this is a genetic disorder. And um, yeah, there's, it's a, a gene for this uh, fibrillin. And that is going to give you um, the strength and the elasticity uh, of connective tissues. And so um, look at that hand. You can see the long fingers. Usually they're going to be tall and lanky. They have a uh, look like that and often they can be athletes because of this this those long hands they can be volleyball players basketball players and the thing is with marfan syndrome famously is that um, you'll have young athletes with this that will um, die suddenly usually you know on a court or during exercise because the real big problem here the deadly problem is that um, the aorta because you know not proper strength around the aorta it's gonna it's gonna balloon out because it's weak you know you have to, it'll dissect it'll, and then it will burst suddenly. And that, you know, you can imagine if your aorta bursts, the, the blood and how quickly you could die. Yeah, but there's other issues too, because the dura mater around your spinal cord can, can balloon out and cause some back problems too. Yeah, but if they suspect someone with Marfan, Marfan syndrome, they can go in and put a, a tough sleeve around that aorta because they know that is a, a place of real weakness and potential. Uh, mortality. So yeah, you'll see this um, um, kind of look. It doesn't mean if you're tall and slender and you have long hands, you have Marfan syndrome. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of rare. So, but uh, uh, that's definitely a, a, a symptom of it. Yeah, you can read more on it. It's interesting. All right, so let's move on now. Let's look to uh, so, some injuries, of course. Uh, and, you know, sports and uh, everything that us humans do, there's all kinds of opportunity to break bones, to have strains and muscle sprains and, and all these things like that. Um, so a sprain um, is when you uh, are going to um, um, tear or stretch a ligament. Yeah. And um, the most common is to sprain your ankle. I've done that many times. And the most common way to sprain your ankle is when you, you land on the, it turns inward. And so turning inward is going to really, really harm those, those ligaments on the lateral side of your foot. Yeah. And so it comes back, it can be more painful than a, a break even or a really bad uh, sprain. Yeah. And then whiplash, of course, if you move your neck and it can go in any direction, you can have uh, um, um, spraining, uh, tearing of ligaments in your neck too. Now a strain is a pulled muscle, if you will. And it can be from minor to serious where the muscle actually rips, right? And so, um, um, yeah. And so normally what's important if, is to do some stretching before you do those hurdles, right? Um, you want to uh, make sure the muscle is uh, prepared for this, uh, this, this exercise, but it's gonna cause inflammation and pain, of course, a muscle strain. Pulled muscle can be very painful as well. Um, subluxation is when you have a dislocation and it kind of slides back and forth. When you pull up a little kid by their arm, you know, they like to be swung around, right? But you pull them up, they can uh, dislocate their, uh, their, uh, their radius, you know, out of, out of the annular ligament in the elbow. And uh, it's going to come out, it's going to be pain. We got to put it back in there and kind of tighten it up. And so you can see here's a shoulder, here's a vertebrae, subluxation, it's slipping out of position. Low back pain. Well, I, I can attest to this. I can, I can tell you about this, but um, it's really so so common in, in humans. Uh, statistics, statistics are like some, like eighty percent of people in their lifetime will have lower back pain. 
So knees and back in humans have a lot of issues because we went from quadrupedal, you know, here's your, oh my God, am I gonna draw like a cat or something? Yeah, we went like this where all of the weight is being carried here and here. Uh, the weight of the guts is distributed between these two. And now all of a sudden we have this, this vertebrae going down our back and a lot of our weight's in the front, especially if you're obese or pregnant, right? And so this is not a very good way to set this up, is it? You should have that girder in the middle with weight evenly distributed, but we don't. And so it puts a lot of torque and stress at this lower back region, yeah. And the knees too, I mean, my God, all kinds of knee problems with humans. So we have this upright, we're able to carry groceries, we're able to see, we're able to, to do these things uh, being bipedal, but it comes with it, back problems and knee problems were part of the deal, all right? There was no real deal, right? Okay, I'm speaking metaphorically. And other things with back pain, when you look at the whole person, you don't obviously, you have back pain, MRI, let's look, it's gotta be, you know, slip tips. No, no, you look at uh, losing some weight and uh, strengthening your core muscles, very important to, for the back, right? Yes, the posture, how do they sit at work? Are they slouching all the time, et cetera? Yeah, and obviously, if you all of a sudden decide to go cut all this firewood and you haven't exercised in, in forever, that's you know, if you did that that's probably a good clue where this came from right and obviously if you have any kind of degeneration osteoporosis disc issue it's going to be back pain is going to be more likely but even in in anyone indeed and so uh, back pain is usually it's going to be the muscles or the ligaments that's going on so you can take muscle relaxers and then pain meds that may do it um, and I had back pain that just didn't go away and uh, um, um, it traveled down my left leg and down to my foot and it was just pain that did not go away. And uh, what was going on there is that I had a, a disc bulging out and pushing on the nerves. So radiculopathy is when you, um, the roots of the nerves are being irritated. It could be that there's uh, osteophytes or bony growth that narrow those openings intervertebral foramen for the nerves, or the disc could be pushing on it. So yeah, anything, it's just a narrow cavity, that vertebral canal, and then the openings where the nerves come out, anything that's impeding that is gonna cause problems with those nerves. You can look at this patient. Yes, that's me. Um, and you look at, I'm gonna show you nice normal discs. Oh, look at that nice uh, gooey center in the middle. You know, these discs, not looking so good. They don't have that center. In fact, this one squirted out into my, where my spinal cord is. Yeah, and kind of to one, one side. And so I felt this pain down my leg. And then, no, that had foot drop. I mean, I didn't even know it until I went to the neurologist. And yeah, so the inability, eventually if I kept doing that, you'd lose both motor uh, and sensory, and so yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, this uh, is corrected by doing a, um, they can do a laminectomy where they cut the top of the vertebrae, a discectomy. If it gets really bad, they can they can fuse the vertebrae together with these plates. Um, they don't really, I don't think they have artificial discs yet that go in there, but they just they can fuse it together. You have less movement, but at least it keeps uh, the pain at bay. Yes, so uh, you can have arthritis in those, those vertebrae, um, um, uh, osteoporosis, you can have bone cancer in those vertebrae. When you hear uh, ankylosing, it means you're gonna have bony formation forms and the bones actually grow together and fuse, so you lose movement in that joint. So ankylosing spondylosis, you can see here. Look at that, the, the discs are thinned and then the bones have grown out and together. So what do you do about low back pain? Well, yeah, exercise and lose some weights will of course help definitely. As I said, muscle relaxants. They'll go in with injections of various uh, things. They'll try that, you know, physical therapy. They'll do that. Do I sound, I, I did a little bit of those. But eventually, yeah, surgery um, is necessary if there's a problem that uh, is, is not gonna go away. All right, the curvature, you want a normal curvature of your spine. <clears throat> Here's the fetal position like that. And then we get a couple uh, curvatures like um, cervical and lumbar that come about later. The baby holds his head up and large, 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 normal posture. 
and uh, you want a normal curvature, kind of it's it's it it's, uh, distributes the weight. It's it's uh, what we want, but any abnormalities of that are going to cause issues. So, I think you're all familiar with scoliosis. We must test that in. in I remember in gym class the girls that, that had that test where they bend over and look at the spine to see if it's it's curving or not because it's more likely uh, in women to have scoliosis. But it's going to be kind of a lateral uh, um, uh, bending of the spine abnormally. You can see it here. Again, many things they can do, all the way up to putting you know rods in there, and then kyphosis is a hunchback. So you see that a lot in the elderly. And it's because the vertebrae are osteoporosis are collapsing, the vertebrae fractures. And so older people get shorter and they get more kyphosis. All right, let's talk about bone breaks. So a uh, fracture can be a hairline fracture where the, the bone hasn't even moved to everything from a, a compound fracture, a fracture where the bone is sticking out is very dangerous because bacteria can get in there like that. Um, so it's uh, very common. Uh, a bone break usually has uh, something you can look back, I shouldn't have done that, or you know, I, I had this accident. But remember, a pathological fracture is when uh, it shouldn't have broken the bone, but there's the bone is weakened and you didn't know it. Yeah, tremendous pain in the bone break, bleeding. But I should say bone heals very, very well, amazingly well. Cartilage, not so much. Cartilage is avascular, and so it doesn't heal very well, but bones filled with blood vessels, and it's, it just, it, it, it remodels itself, and it's, it's almost as good as new at the, at the end of it. Yeah. All right, so some terms for fractures. You guys are familiar. I mean, incomplete makes sense. I mean, yeah, it's a, a crack in a bone, right? It's not going to separate. Complete fracture is when it's separated. Yeah. Uh, Comminuted, it's a tough word right there is when you have several pieces of that. And that's, as long as you line them up, they'll, 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 they'll fuse together again, but you know, a serious break where it's crushed into pieces, yeah. A compression fracture, especially in the vertebrae, you'll see that. The elderly will have a weakened osteoporosis anyway, and then they'll, they'll just kind of collapse on each other. But an open fracture is uh, very serious in that uh, you're introducing dirt and bacteria into your bone, it's got osteomyelitis, or into your bloodstream. So yeah, an open fracture is uh, disturbing to see and uh, disturbing to the medical professional knowing that that's an entry to uh, bacteria as opposed to a closed fracture. And it's broken, you may see it. It's broken, but it's not, the skin isn't broken. Yeah, and if you, um, just in the lingo, a stable fracture is nice. Uh, an unstable fracture means that it's, uh, it's moving around. And you can break your, your, um, your dens on the, uh, the axis that comes up, that can break. And the x-ray is actually taken through your mouth. It's interesting, right? Because it's higher than you think up here. And uh, yeah, and so you can see there's a form that's stable and unstable, just as an example there. But you want to stabilize the bones with a cast, right? Or a splint, or maybe rods and screws. But keep it together and it will heal. And the healing process, you know, not to get into it too much, but when you first break a bone, tremendous pain and blood. And so blood clot will form. And then within days, you're starting to make this fibrocartilage callus, it's called a callus. It's just haphazardly put down just to kind of patch it, to strengthen it up. And then over time, that, uh, that fibrocartilage and uh, this uh, woven bone, so it's not very organized, gets remodeled over time. And usually you make extra bone. So you can see, uh, this callus here, look at that, looking at uh, probably a radius, that's going to um, grow and then it will, the remodeling takes months and months and you will shave it off. So usually you put on too much bone and then you shave it off and you organize it again. Yeah, so your body does a great job with this. When you're young, as you get elderly, bones don't break, don't heal as well for sure. Yeah, so you want to put them together. If you don't, before, you know, when we look at a, a bones from medieval times and caveman times, you say, oh my God, they did not have a cast, right? So if you don't put the bones back together, you can get deformities definitely and permanent. But, you know, today healthcare, we, we go and we, uh, almost anything can be put back together. This show is kind of interesting. Uh, it's 
person's uh, metacarpals. <clears throat> they could put some stabilizers. And look at these these uh, artificial joints. You see that? They put in these these joints. So, yeah. All right. And infection, we'll see osteomyelitis is infection in the bone itself. And if the bones don't come together, it can cause these deformities. Yeah. All right. So um, bone breaks, like I said, age makes a huge difference. Like I say, if you're young, you guys, it heals real quick. Upper limb, you look better than lower limb. You're gonna see it's, it's strange. So we know which bones kind of work better. If you break it towards the, the joint, it's, it's more difficult than if you break it in the middle. It usually heals uh, faster and better, definitely. Um, and if it's a pathologic fracture, you have osteoporosis or cancer, then uh, yeah, it's going to happen again, you know, if you, even if you, you, you mend it. So you got to like kind of address the underlying issue. And then uh, the blood supply is interesting. The, a good example is your scaphoid. It's one of the most commonly broken bones. You land on your hands, it breaks in your wrist. And what you'll see is that <clears throat> depending on where the break is, uh, the blood supply for this comes in one side, goes to the other. So if you break it and you isolate a piece of bone without the blood supply, it goes through necrosis. That bone dies because it's, it's no longer connected to the bone, to the blood supply. So this, in this case, they really need to take a look at it. They know a lot about this. You can have this avascular necrosis where blood supply is cut off because of the break. So any bone needs the blood supply or else it's just going to die. And just so you guys know, when, when grandpa breaks his hip, he's not breaking his ilium and ischium, the pubis, you're breaking the neck of the femur. Again, lots of uh, spongy tissue, so it's a place where uh, uh, it can become weakened. All right. Septic arthritis is when you have bacteria growing in your joints. Microbiology, you keep hearing these things come up, staph and strep, right? So these are common, most common bacteria that will grow in these joints and they're not supposed to be anything growing in there, right? And so uh, they can take a, a syringe and take out a bit of that fluid and say, oh my God, you got strep growing in your um, joint or gonorrhea can grow in the joints too. Um, <clears throat> yep, so septic arthritis, it can either get there, let's say you have an infection elsewhere. So you have a, even a cut in your finger, that bacteria can grow go into that joint, or it could be a nearby injury where it grows in there, um, um, uh, or you could have an injury to the joint that allow bacteria to get in there. So somehow they got into the joint and now they've made a home and they're growing and your body is, you know, trying to fight off the infection. So there's inflammation. Yeah. So in this case, it's usually a joint. It's not necessarily bilateral. And uh, yeah, I just found this looking at different <clears throat> organisms that they uh, they suspect depending on, on, on the age. Interesting, salmonella. Is that? You guys recognize those? Yep. Um, IV drug users. Yeah, so they're going to have uh, other organisms that got into your blood through injection, through dirty needles, things like that. Yep. But here, this joint is the um, going to be the uh, clavicular uh, sternoclavicular joint. So you can see that's definitely inflamed right there. Yeah. All right, osteomyelitis, big issue if you're in pharmacy looking at what antibiotics to use, but this is infection in the bone that can be nasty and difficult to, to get rid of. All right, so osteomyelitis. Um, when you're homogenous, it means it's coming from the bloodstream. So uh, once um, you get some kind of bacteria, some organism growing in the bone, um, and then you have bone necrosis and death, the real issue is you, you start having dead islands of bone and antibiotics can't get into dead bone because it needs to go through the blood and there's no longer blood in there. So you often got to do surgery to cut out those pieces or it's never going to, you're going to have this slow infection forever because you can't get rid of it. Yeah. Um, it's usually here in the metaphysis, not in the epiphysis. And so you can see here it's grown, it's, uh, it's spread out, it can, it, can, it can rupture, it can come out and have pus coming out of your skin or it can uh, little uh, channels can grow and that bacteria can get into the joint. So osteomyelitis, nasty. <clears throat> bacteria and pus, you know, within the bone and, and hard to get to. Yeah, you gotta get in there. Yeah, and you can, you can read this if you like. So having a prosthetic joint can introduce bacteria during the surgery, right? Yeah, definitely, you have a, a, bone, a bone break. Diabetes, you can have you can have gangrene of your toes and then bacteria can get into the toe bones there. So you can imagine bacteria could get into your bones. 
Yeah, and so uh, secondary means it's, it's come from a, a wound nearby. It's, it's come in there. It's not just coming from the bloodstream somewhere. And sometimes osteomyelitis will be caused by a, a cut on your toe and it ends up up here. It's just that's where the, the organism gained entry and just found its way there. Okay. Yep. So when you have operations, you can get in. Definitely. I talked about gangrene. So you got to get in there, remove the dead tissue because antibiotics are not getting in there. And you want to open it up, drain it, because you have this pus that's coming out, and just know the right kind of drugs to, to kill those bugs. Yeah, and you can see, osteomyelitis, nothing to fool around with. All right, so very common in the elderly. Osteoporosis. Now, osteopenia just means that you have uh, decreased bone density. But when it gets really bad, we call it osteoporosis. The thing about penia means not, not many. Porosis means you got pores, you have little holes in there, right? So it's, it's, it's on a scale, oh, you can take a look, yeah, yeah. So the definition there you can see, it's osteopenia, when it gets really bad, we call it osteoporosis. There you go. And um, you can do, they have great machines now that's a, that can give you a T-score, yeah, T-score. And uh, um, that's gonna tell you how dense your bone is, yeah. So in that kid with pitching arm, be more dense than the non-pitching arm. Um, a young person be more dense than an elderly person, especially an elderly woman, because uh, with uh, hormones, they tend to lose uh, bone more often, yeah, more, more quickly. And so they can look at serum levels, look at your alkaline phosphate and phosphatase and calcium and phosphorus. Yeah. So osteopenia. And uh, you can see here, you can see men and women, uh, that uh, men are gonna have greater bone mass than women. And so you see osteoporosis affecting older women uh, at a much higher rate. And then you add in their menopause, this uh, change in, in, in estrogen, and it really accelerates things. But men will catch up you know, over time, but women get osteoporosis more quickly, and men, it's a slower decline. They start at a higher level. And that higher level is the key. I mean, when you're young, you want to build strong bones because you're going to have a decrease. It's just that, remember that teeter-totter? just towards bone destruction is going to happen. So if you start at a higher place, maybe you'll die of something else before uh, your bones get too weak. I'm so cheerful, aren't I? <clears throat> yeah, so we know after menopause that the drop in estrogens accelerates this bone loss. And where you see the bone loss is not all bones equally. You see it in spongy bone because there's more surface area, more osteoclasts can get to it right? Because osteoclasts work from the outside. So spongy has lots of little spicules it can grow on. And so I love this. When you look at this vertebrae, you can see especially in the vertebrae, in the hip, in the, in the femur, the beginning of the, 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 um, of the long bones is the main spots of osteoporosis issues. So yeah, as you get older, um, posture, you have uh, these vertebrae start compressing and breaking. And the hip is the other big one. Along bed rest, yeah. The more active you are, especially in uh, in uh, uh, the more exercise that is um, where your uh, impact exercise is gonna, when you're putting impacts on the bones, your body's gonna react by uh, thickening them. But osteoporosis is when it gets two and a half standard deviations away from normal. Osteopenia it happens earlier. Oh, gorgeous. Just looking at that, you can tell, you know, the, the, the density of the bone like, becoming more porous. So osteoporosis, um, hormones, definitely. Lack of exercise, sedentary, yes. A lack of calcium in your diet, but also more likely it's vitamin D issues. You're not absorbing the calcium. You may eat enough cheese, but if you can't get it in your body, it's, it's, it's useless, right? There's other diseases, too, um, that involve calcium. And uh, uh, you have a parathyroid hormone. Uh, the parathyroid tumor, you're going to be making too much and you're going to be breaking down bones. Smoking, eating disorders, being uh, a female and uh, white or Asian, uh, and other things. So a lot of work in osteoporosis. You know, we need, there are drugs. Uh, there's things you can take. You know, why can't we, it's such a big problem. Why can't we just give you a pill or, or have more calcium in your vitamins. And that may seem simple like that. Just we need to take more calcium. But it turns out that I've just read some research looking at it. it's not about you know taking pills with calcium. They, they don't think it hurts, you know, but but it's it's more like absorption. How do you get it to the bones? There's more to it than just 
I'm just going to take calcium and I won't get um, osteoporosis. Yes, and once you have it, you can't just fix it. It's not like, oh, I found out I have osteoporosis. Let me just get that fixed. No, I mean, your bones are weak. And so you really got to worry about your lifestyle. Try not to trip. And at older people, they're often taking medications that can make them dizzy. If they trip from a normal fall, they break a wrist, they break a hip. And once they get a major uh, bone break, uh, if you're very elderly and frail, they, their depression sets in, this lack of mobility, and they often just kind of go downhill. So um, yeah, bone breaks uh, are just more serious for the elderly. Yeah, but uh, vitamin D, make sure you get some sunshine. Look at me, I tell you, don't get the sun. Skin cancer, last lecture. This lecture, get some sun. No osteoporosis, right? Um, there's obviously a balance here, definitely. And you talk about um, uh, when, whenever you have hormone replacement therapy, they, they, in their mind is osteoporosis. Got to think about that. But mainly uh, continue exercise uh, uh, early on to build it up. And as you get older, because the bones that are being, have weight put on them will stay denser than if they're, they're not being used. Yeah. yeah, and there's drugs. All right. Now, this is similar that your bones get weak, but osteomalacia and then rickets is when you have it as a kid. Both of these are conditions where um, the, uh, the bone it becomes, uh, becomes weak because it doesn't have enough minerals in it, like osteoporosis. But uh, uh, here you can see uh, as a very big problem in the past uh, rickets, where if your bones are um, so flexible, not enough crystal in them, they will bend under your weight. So you'll see in the arm bones and leg bones is big bowing like that. Um, and uh, we call it osteomalacia and, and as, as a, as a, um, um, when you're an adult and you have this bone softening issue. Um, again, rickets as a kid. And rickets is actually making a comeback, a study in Britain, how kids are getting rickets again because they're playing inside on their video games and they're outdoors getting sunshine. So they're not making vitamin D. So look at that. Oh, yeah, it covered. And even um, using sun, too much sunscreen, you're like, oh, yeah, your mixed messages. And then uh, if uh, religious purposes or you're uh, in, in an old elderly home and you're not brought outside enough, these are all ways you don't have enough vitamin D. And so you're going to have calcium deficiencies can cause osteomalacia. Yeah, and so as a kid, if you have it, your bones are going to bow. They're going to be uh, permanently uh, deformed like that. Um, yeah. So rickets. Take a look at that. Gonna have, uh, oh yeah, interesting. Look at that one kid. No, I'm sorry, kid rickets. So it's gonna be more dramatic as compared to an adult because their bones are growing. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about some arthritis. Um, first of all, your, your normal arthritis, degenerative or osteoarthritis, is wearing down of the cartilage in your joints. And so there's gonna be pain. Um, right here is beautiful. If you know me, I love the histology. It's a beautiful hyaline cartilage. Look at that. It's articular cartilage. And then you can see, oh, yeah, we've lost it there. So now it's bone on bone, crunching and painful, right? So uh, um, you see this as you get older, you get this degenerative arthritis. Yeah. And so you're going to have uh, joint pain and stiffening, lack of movement. You see a bony growth that formed because of this. Yeah. Yeah, so you guys are all are, are seeing the a view of just wear and tear. It could be that you you played some sports, or it could be, you know, idiopathic. We're not sure why you have this uh, this arthritis. Um, and when you hear these these osteophytes will grow these little lips of bone. This is extra bone growing here, especially in the vertebrae. They'll grow these little extra. And if they grow in these little holes, they're going to impede the nerves. But uh, you'll see this little extra bone growth that'll grow <clears throat> and the joint will become worse and worse. Um, more common in women and usually see it uh, in these, uh, these uh, distal uh, interphalangeal joints here. Yeah, so this is a view of degenerative arthritis. I'm gonna show you rheumatoid in the next slide. So take a look at that. You see the, um, the stiffening, the enlarging of the joints, painful. Sometimes it'll get to a point where it'll just ankylose, it'll just grow together and you can't even be moved. So rheumatoid has a little different look to it. It's often this kind of bending look to it, uh, to, the, to the joint. It's a different disease. So 
osteoarthritis, uh, degenerative is just uh, um, like it sounds. It's going to be a destroying of the cartilage. And rheumatoid, we believe, is autoimmune. This is where you attack the synovial joint. And so it becomes inflamed. And eventually it destroys the cartilage in, in, in its way and it makes it stiffer. So it's a really different, a different animal completely. Both of them having some of the same effects, um, uh, but uh, it's a really different, a different disease. Yeah, so autoimmune inflammatory disease is rheumatoid. Osteo is a degeneration, just a, a wearing down of the cartilage. And so, yeah, um, this inflammation will grow in that lining of the joints. A panis is going to be like this, is going to be a layer that, of, of, uh, of tissue, fiber tissue, or granuloma tissue. That grow, and that, that irritates um, the surrounding joint and just accelerates the destruction of the joint. Yep. So rheumatoid arthritis is more likely in women and usually in older age, although look, it's talking about 30s to 60s. Um, and you can, it really varies on how bad it is. Um, um, uh, definitely. Um, and you can see here, look at this, you have a, a normal joint and then you've got this inflammation. See the red, there's a, a panis forming. And then you have fibro tissue growing. Look, at it, it's, 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 it's grown together. And so you've lost all movement in that joint. Sees a lot in the hands. So there's a lot of unknown. You can look at this, but somehow we make antibodies, and these are detectable in the blood. So you can do a test to see if you have rheumatoid arthritis, and uh, that is going to attack the synovial membrane, attack the joint. So, so that's what autoimmune means. We get antibodies against our own tissue. And um, um, yeah, dumb of our body, but somehow it gets. It gets uh, triggered and it starts attacking the joints. So yeah, usually develops over years, definitely. Um, um, and what you can do is, uh, you know, give steroids uh, to reduce inflammation. You know, so you're working just at the symptoms. And then antagonists to try to just slow down this um, um, immune reaction. And uh, yeah, if it gets really bad, I mean, they can replace the joint. They can replace finger joints, everything. So. That's, that's pretty much it, you know, uh, uh, leave the pain, uh, the swelling, and then uh, just uh, see how best you can live with it. Now, juvenile arthritis used to be thought it was rheumatoid. It's got its own category now, this juvenile arthritis. Obviously, it occurs in, in children, and it can cause uh, um, um, some, some, some serious disabilities. You can see uh, kids with uh, knee joints or back problems. It can be very severe or it can be less severe. But uh, yeah, uh, pain medications, physical therapy, um, yeah, it's another type of, uh, you think it's attacking your own uh, joints. So yeah, normal joints, see that beautiful. And here's rheumatoid, they're showing a lot of uh, inflammation. Uh, degenerative, we're seeing just the uh, wearing down of it like that. And our next, our last one really is gout. And this is gonna be putting, uh, um, uric acid crystals, because you have too much of it, just like precipitates out in the joints. So you got this like sand in there. And look at some hands. Remember, hey, here's this kind of look of rheumatoid arthritis, kind of this bending kind of look. And osteoarthritis, big bulges. And then gout, we'll see next. You can have the joint is just swollen, filled with this uric acid. So gout. My major professor as a, when my master's had gout. Older male, yeah, so that's uh, typical. You see it's more likely in men, older men. And what typically happens with gout is that you have pain in your big toe joint. Almost always starts in that big toe joint. And uh, they can look at your blood levels. Stage one, you have high uric acid levels. You may see that and not have gout. Absolutely. But in some people, um, this uric acid precipitates out. You know, it's in high levels. It starts crystallizing out. And... Um, yeah, and so you can have this uh, periods of this just intense pain. You can't sleep because of it. Yeah, you can get chronic gout where it keeps coming back and can, can feel better for a while. Um, yeah, and these, these tofi or these uh, accumulations, I'll show you a picture. Oh, got uric acid coming out there. Um, so uh, classically, yeah, it affects that uh, metatarsal phalangeal joint of the big toe, but you can see here also in the ankle as well. 
So this gal, you have too much uric acid. Um, so what they can do is you can uh, watch your diet. I think lobster has a lot of uh, purines. Are, when you break that down, it makes a lot of uric acid. It's, in, uh, it's an amino acid, right? So they, yeah, oh yeah, there's, there's a crab. Oh my God, I'm good. The lobster right there. I knew there was a one really bad part about having gout. Um, but you can watch your diet and that will, that will help with the gout. And there are drugs. I'm thinking of some, but I better not say it because I could be wrong, um, that are involved with uric acid. But I've, you also learn you can have people with high levels of uric acid that don't have gout. So, and some people, um, uh, they will precipitate out. But watch your diet. There are some drugs and exercise helps the symptoms of gout. All right, a ganglia. Now, this is not the nervous system ganglia, neurons, right? But I've seen these, yeah, I've seen these very close to here. Um, you've got a, a, um, a, a cyst that moves up and down on the tendon. It kind of comes off a, a capsule, a joint capsule, and it moves around. So this is mainly, it can be painful, but it's often just a stupid human trick, just an unusual thing. So the, these ganglia um, uh, are these little swellings that, 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 that move. Pretty freaky. All right, a couple more things. Uh, this Paget disease is a is a disease of the, of, the, of the bone where the bone is not uh, produced correctly, so it becomes uh, porous and, and, and weaker. And some people are asymptomatic, you don't notice it. But uh, other people, you'll have uh, seriously misshapen bones because of this Paget disease. So osteitis deformans, the name makes perfect sense, right? Finally, we get, always get to cancer, so we get to, to neoplasm. So, Malignants, well, uh, metastasis, remember, is the most common, where you're going to have some cancer for someone else. But cancer of the bone itself, osteosarcoma. Sarcomas will be a connective tissue cancer. So um, this one, often, most often in the knee. And um, you'll have this big bony mass. And you, you may notice it because you have a bone fracture. They'll look at it like, oh, my God, it's been weakened by this cancer that you didn't know. Or you can, you can feel it, you can feel it. If you just get an extra, you'll, you'll see, obviously, you've got abnormal bone growth of bone cells. Yeah. And so what they'll do, um, yeah, all, all the cancer stuff, right? So radiation, chemotherapy, try to cut out that piece of bone. Yeah. And this shows, uh, in case you want us to take a look at our osteosarcoma. Yeah, it's uh, not that, it's pretty rare. All right, so finally, just one slide on organ failure. If your bones fail, you all know that what's going to happen, right? You're going to be in a cast. You're going to be, uh, this is all the bones failing here. Um, so um, when you have a failure of the bones, you're going to have a disability of uh, normal movements, right? Yeah. All right, so a lot of issues, right? Bones and joints. Uh, um, so hopefully um, you got a lot out of this. and. Uh, Thanks for watching.